Hey everybody, John Bernakovich here with All Points Design. That's allpointsdesign.ca and Neil Botrando of RT Permaculture. Today we're going to be talking about the Oregon State University Permaculture Design Certificate and the Sector Compass Assignment. Now, the Sector Compass Assignment is all about the energies that flow onto and off of a property. And we can do three things with those energies. We can amplify them, we can deflect them, or we can use them. So when we take a look at the energies, there's, you're going to see in the requirements, there's some optional ones. Definitely for me, almost none of them are optional because you do have social permaculture around you. Somewhere around you, there's another human being. They may be 10 kilometers away, as it is in my situation, but they are there. Or you may have somebody living on the property, or you may have hunters that come through every once in a while. All that happens to me on my property. So I'm just telling you that you do have sectors, all of them, on your property. Some of them are low, low intensity. Some of them are very infrequent, but you got them. The more you take a look at the sectors, the more opportunity you have to utilize them or remove something that might be a problem in your design. So don't shrug this assignment off as like, oh, we got to take a look at sectors. I'll make my little, my, my little pie graph. Don't shrug it off. It's a really important assignment. It's one that I think is uh, important for us to do because it helps us to understand what's going on on our site. Neil, anything to add before we get into the case studies? Uh, sectors a lot of times are energies that you cannot change how they enter your site. You can just change how you work with them once they're there. So it becomes, I, I think, really important to understand that aspect of where they're coming from, how they're showing up, when they're showing up. And I encourage people to use uh, at least one, maybe two adjectives for each sector that gives you a little bit of an intensity uh, adjective and also a temporal adjective. Those are, those are very helpful. Uh, the final thing is that not all sectors come on the compass rows. This is called the sector compass, but some sectors come, enter, move through, and leave a site in more of a line type of pattern or a path. So I encourage people to use a path or a line for sectors where that's appropriate as well. Great, great comments. Thanks, Neil. Okay, we're gonna share again with you some, some examples. Um, this again was one of those incredible uh, examples again as we've seen some examples here before so they've really gone through them all they've they've shown us the north northeast wind the summer sun the winter sun the wildlife the fire the noise uh, noise with a z it's very important privacy public and they've given us a description and they've done it all on one map very excited about this folks very excited you use two maps i'm less excited one map very excited so they've gone into it's so a water sector due to the property being very close to the watershed boundary and being on a high elevation relative to Itchin River, there is no flood risk. Great. They've explained why there isn't a flood sector. Awesome. Roadways and associated storm water drainage system prevent natural flow of water onto the property. Again, told us what's going on. As you go through this, you're going to see that there's a public sector as people walk by. Again, everybody has some kind of social sector. You have some kind of interaction. You got a neighborhood kid who walks over the back fence every time he throws a ball. That's a public sector, that's a, a neighbor sector. Uh, shown us some of the prevailing winds and shown us where they are and shown us when they come. So that's an important thing as well. Summer winds come in usually different direction than winter winds. Uh, we've take, taken a look at fire risk, usually due to being closer to other buildings, whereas on the, the northeast side, not so. Uh, also told us a fire and rescue station is located 2.4 miles from the site. Wonderful, wonderful pieces here. Uh, showed us also some times of sunrise, daylight, sunset, showed us socioeconomic cultural sectors. So didn't graphically showed, sh showed us this, but definitely described it. And when we start getting into higher levels of design, my sector, especially when we're taking a look at um, economic um, evaluation, I will do in-depth business assessments of different major metropolitan centers or municipalities around the site. And that's still sector evaluation. So realize that this is a first stab at sectors at a very simplistic level and they become quite sophisticated with the level of sophistication with your design. Wildlife quarter showing us where, th where those usually come in and then the noise sector as well. So good examples here. Again, this is a great example where this is overlaid on top of the base map. And that's what we're going to see in all of these iterations. We're gonna see them overlaid. You're gonna see a lot of examples where they haven't done this. and 
now Neil and I and primary graders have to do a lot of work to understand the site again, because now you're disassociating us from a site that we've only really seen once from your base map. Neil, things to add to this one? Sure, yep. Um, some things, I like that they've done some work with opacity on their compass rows sectors. I'd like to see it be a little bit more transparent so that I can see the site underneath it and understand how the sectors are actually moving onto the site. Um, sometimes I would even, for especially for a large site, I would advocate for the, the sector compass to be not actually connected to the map physically so that you can move it around mm. so that you can see how the, the spe like for example, the sun angles affect different locations on the site because they come to a point. Uh, and so you might position something or design something slightly different um, than it actually, than the, in response to the sector map, than it actually happens on the site if you're not able to move it around. Uh, a third thing that I, I see on this that I'd like to see maybe a little bit more, maybe that is occurring in the descriptions, I can't make them out quite, is that I'd like to see a little bit more adjectives on like the north northeast wind. Is that a hot wind? Is it a cold wind? Are they strong winds? Are they gentle? You know, something that defines that a little bit more clearly, if that's possible. Or that, that make a note that I would like to learn more about this wind, you know, and be able to define it more clearly because your response to the sector is going to depend not just upon the direction that it comes from, but also the intensity, the type, the tent, and the timing of it. Great, great points. So again, things not to do. I don't like to see these in two different sectors or two different um, sections of the map. If necessary, you can do it. But also, now we moved off of the base map, which we've seen before on this one, which was very simple, but now we've kind of disassociated. So it's a bit harder to understand and to, to interact with. And again, it's a bit more different. So now we've got summer sun, winter sun, wildlife, prevailing winds. Again, as Neil was talking about, occasional Chinook winds bring very warm temperatures and offer respite during the long cold winters. So getting a sense of the temporal aspect and also the intensity aspect. Um, spectacular Rocky Mountains are visible to the west. Again, a little disassociated here as we move up to this, a little harder to understand, but generally this was well done. Um, simple colors, really well matched. Uh, some of the the lighter colors kind of blend in a little bit. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more contrast between those colors, but generally uh, really well done, uh, albeit some of the points I've already made. Neil? Uh, on the contrast note, if, if you can't get colors that stand out and they're easy to tell apart, then change your line style. Make a dotted line as opposed to a solid line. That's really helpful. I totally agree on, I wanna see the site. Hmm. I wanna see the sectors in relation to the site. This doesn't really tell me a lot, a box with lines around it. And yeah. I mean, so how, how do you design on your site in response to the sectors, unless you can see how they are actually positioned in relation to the site specific? So that would be a comment I would immediately have for this person. Uh, another thing is that there's just several that are missing. So I would ask, where's the fire sector, for example? Is there a chance of fire? Is there no chance of fire? Why? Um, if there's a road right by it, I immediately think, yes, there's a chance of fire. Well, you know, there would be a point of ignition potentially on the road. So how, how are you considering that? Those sorts of things. It's going to be a public sector. There's going to be a neighbor sector. Your neighbors might be 25, 45, 145 kilometers away. They're still going to be there at some point. Uh, we're still on a contained planet. You're going to have a distance. You're going to have a direction. You're going to have a neighbor. But they and there's definitely a water sector. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. But, what they could have done is change the opacity of this image and dropped it way down and then put this image over top so it was very clear. They also could have put this image into a grayscale. So they could have changed it from a color to a grayscale and we would have still seen some contrast. So lots of options when we get to, to changing so they can be one and the same. Or just right on top of it. You know, they've already got it in their, their PowerPoint or drawing program. So you can just put the colors on top of it and you select colors that stand out on top of that background. Great point. So here's another example of things we don't want to see. Here's one, here's two. And again, we've lost a lot of the title block here. So it says so, uh, sector compass, it says Julie Kovacs. Where's the name? Where, where, pardon me, where's the date? Where's the name of the site? Where's the address? Where are the things that we want to start seeing? I still want to see a scale usually because I still want this on the base map. Um, Fine to use pencil crayons, and generally this was actually really well done. These all contrast really well. A little busy, 
you know, I, it would have been nice to see a bit more space like we see here, because then I could be able to relate it a bit, little bit more. But again, winter sun, summer sun, winter, uh, winter wind, summer breeze, wildlife, fire, noise, views, neighbors, flood, visitors, flood. Uh, extra points if you find a sector that's not on the list. You know, think about what actually affects your site. It shows us that you're thinking and moving. Again, really good, um, uh, really good. Ex excuse me, explanations, but still on two on two pages, a little bit difficult for us to go back and forth and understand the site. So if you're looking for not only feedback on the assignment as graders, but as consultants and as designers ourselves, make it easy for us because we want to help you do the best work you can on this site. Neil. Yeah, um, just a, a basic note, from a graphic design and visual presentation perspective, the, the simpler it is, the better, right? The, the simpler, the mo more simple you can make a graphic to convey a, a complex suite of information, the more easily we can take it in and understand it and then give you feedback from a, a design perspective as opposed to a graphic perspective. So that, that's, a, I'd say, a big one. Um, and it's a challenge. So use these opportunities to practice that because it, you, it's, it takes a lot of time. And I struggle with it. And I'm still trying to, to get better and better at it all the time because I feel like that's a huge skill as a designer is learning to become, to communicate visually in simpler terms continually over time. Um, another, of course, I fell with that. Another thing I, I see on this one that it, it just, it, it's very abstract, right? I'm not totally clear what the site is, what the things are in relation to. So it makes it, it makes it tough for me to relate to the site. And it also, I, if it makes it tough for me to relate to the site, it, I think it makes it tough for the actual person putting it together to really relate to the site well. And what we're trying to work with you to develop is for you to have a really good understanding of your site. That's one of the big takeaways you get from this course and from being able to work with us is that we can give you feedback and ask you questions and prime you to go out and make observations and, and get those aha moments so that you can both learn and develop a very powerful relationship with your site through observation and analysis, as well as learn the tools and the practices that allows you to develop a strong understanding and relationship of other sites in the future. Well said. Think, oh, one last. <clears throat> so again, I have no idea where this one is. So we don't even have a property boundary. We have no delineation now because they follow what I do, which is a portfolio. I know it's the same site, but if this was left by itself, I'd have a very hard time understanding where this is. Um, this has been actually really well done because not only have they used a legend, but they've also dropped in um, some labeling and they've, they've transgressed in the only way that I think is uh, formidable for me, which is they've done upside down uh, labeling, but it's all, it's all been the same. So it's always the same moving around and they even went back in and they started to put in uh, darker lettering to show it. So it was an innovative conversation they put in here, but again, we're missing a lot of sectors. We're missing a lot of, elements here. Uh, we're missing the site itself. We're missing the title block. We're missing the scale. There's a lot of things missing here. So they did some good things, but they also, they missed out. And as Neil was talking about, sometimes it's easier to show directions with arrows and they've done that as well. So nice to see that they've changed some line weights here. So we've got some, um, we've got some intensity. So we get, we get it. This is very, uh, a very big fire se sector. They've even said, Cigarettes tossed out of car, BBQ, fire pit, hikers. Uh, and again, this is where upside down titling doesn't necessarily work. And I wouldn't recommend it, but I'm, I, I'm okay with it. But don't do it. Uh, <laughs> neighborhood campground or pub. So they've, they've given us a good understanding. And they've kind of put it into priorities in terms of the negative uh, situations on the site. So good pieces there that I enjoyed. But there are some major drawbacks on this one. Neil, uh, last thoughts on this last case study? Um, I, I like how they did the inventory of like the animals for their wildlife sector and that sort of stuff. They com conveyed a lot of detailed information about the sectors in a small amount of space and in a way that's you know relatively clear and legible. So that is a, I think that's a job very well done. One thing that 
I haven't seen in any of these sector maps was what I mentioned. Often water and wildlife in particular move through a site along a path or a corridor. And so often that's what I would use, uh, would be a line or a, a path of some sort along, and then you need the site map. <laughs> like what, what does this tell you if it's just a line on a you know, blank page? So if you have the site map, that also allows you to look at some of the, the details of the site and understand why water or wildlife are moving on a path through a site. Yeah, so just as Neil's talking about, I'm just putting some examples here. <coughs> so we'd want a line. And again, you can tell that I went to preschool because my arrows are perfect. Um, we've got a couple of really simple ways of showing this, just saying this is a wildlife sector, this is a creek sector. So sometimes it's as simple as a pathway. And again, that if that's what you gave us and yet it was complete, that would still be fine. It, you know, it doesn't have to be totally pretty, perfect, super straight. Uh, more than happy to accept things that are just very clear and complete. So again, clarity and completion are more important than beautiful artistic renderings that you do 12 times because you want it to look just so. Always think that simpler is better. So as we were taking a look at, at the other one, uh, it was a good example I wanted to bring up. Uh, just gonna go back here. I just have to pull up my, uh, where's it here? So this didn't have to be colored in. This could have been a strong, bold line and it would have still conveyed what we were looking for. So there was an opportunity here to do less work and we're fine with less work. Both of us try to be as efficient with our time and usage as, as much as possible. So always think, how can this be easy? It's one of the best um, questions for my design work, my business, my land design, my life design, my podcast, how can this be easy? And that's how these uh, video sessions came up, I was thinking, how can it be easy to get across some information to you folks in a simple way so we don't have to spend a lot of time doing a lot of editing, uh, mechanical editing on your work. And so hopefully this helps. Um, Neil, anything else you wanted to add? Nope, I think that's it. We, I think you covered it really well. Uh, okay. I'd reinforce that, Sim simpler is better. How can I make this easier and more clear at the same time? And it will, if it takes you less time and it's more clear, then that's great. We can have more discussion around design. And that's something to consider. We have a set amount of time for each student per week. And so if we spend a lot of time saying, where's your title block? Where's the date? Where's your scale? Where's your North Arrow? We're eating up all of our brain power, which we have to give to you in design, but we're eating it up with playing the, the grammar game, the mechanical editing game. And we don't want to do it uh, just like you don't want us to do it because it's it's a waste of our brain power. We have so much horsepower to give to you and we want to give it to you. Really do spend the time to be mechanically good or or as, as near 100% as possible. And then we can have a conversation about what really matters, which is how the site interacts with the objectives of the owners, with the ability of the designer, with the ecological situation that surrounds it with the social situation with all those interactions which is really the the meat and potatoes the chewing on the gristle of design and that's what we really want to get to so thanks again for watching and listening and we'll see you at the next video we hope you continue to do really great work because we want to see you do exceptionally well in the course thanks so much everybody <music>